Hey, it's Donnet Rocks at Grape City. Yay. We're talking today about reporting. Once I discovered Active Reports, basically I was, what am I doing with Crystal Reports? You know? uh -huh. It was one of those aha moments. Can you report on an iList collection, for yeah. example? Sure, Active that... Reports, man, anything. anything. iList, an array of data, just anything. I mean, anything. essentially we have a collection of fields which is kind of your columns, right? And then you can just shove values in it and then it'll pull them out of anywhere. We've always had this idea that we want to let the users build their own reports. I've just always found it, it's a train wreck. Especially when you think of it from a developer perspective, yeah. like Active Reports, right? Developers want to control everything. They want to write code in an event. They want to control everything with code. That's how they, they just love it. And sure. that's why they love Active Reports. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then you have end users who don't know code. They don't even know SQL. They don't even know how to get the data in yeah. the report. Yeah. They have a completely different perspective on reporting. We firmly believe that they need two different designers. And that's why we've been building our newest product, Active Report Server, mm -hmm. which is a, a business user oriented designer where they don't need to write code but it still considers the developer on the back end that they can upload their old reports to it. They can control the data and how the database looks for those uh, end users. Yeah. They can map the database and hide things and make the, the tables or the attributes look different to the end user. Yeah, you uh, don't want to let the end user make any kind of join because they'll mess it up. Well, yeah. actually, we'll take care of it, man. Yeah, so you so protect the problem. We have a data model yeah. and you can control the relationships and how they work. There's all kinds of interaction popping up. I can do very interactive filtering here, uh, you know, drop downs, very easy to do all of these things for an end user, right? I mean, they don't need to know SQL, it's pretty easy for them to do this stuff. You know, developers think, okay, I need to create a query and get the data. Yep. And actually, business users tend to think, okay, I have a chart and I want it to look this way. So actually, we took a different approach where start with a chart or start with a tabular and just a table in a report and just start putting the data in it and you might start off with customer and then work your way down to that customer's orders mm -hmm. and put it all in the same report. But we, since we have this data model, we understand the relationships and we know how to, we know that, ah, this needs aggregated and we need to group by this. Right. That's what they want to see. Yeah. So we put it all together for them and in the back end, we're building that query with the joins in a, in a smarter way. But developers, they don't want to design reports this way, right? Yeah, I mean, sure. they want to report on objects and right. they know better how to get the data. Sure. I, th I thought Active Reports uh, server looked very good um, compared to a lot of the other report servers out there. It seems to be v very flexible and uh, good for the beginner and uh, intermediate end user. I'm looking forward to trying, trying it out. As a developer, when I'm setting up this self-service module, I can say, well, these are the joins that are allowed. I can, I can restrict those things, yes. sort of simplify it too. You don't want to give the user a huge list of tables to just scare them. Right, like before we mentioned that databases are normalized. A developer, right. DBA, we have reasons to do this. It yeah. makes sense to do this. Yeah. But for a business user, it doesn't make any sense. Now you, sh you show a business user, a user a many-to-many -many joining table, you just right. it's blow a, their mind. Absolutely, and that's an example of something where actually that's a relationship. Um, you know, a, a join table is a relationship between two different tables. Right. And we actually just take it out automatically. We yeah. can identify things like that and right. remove it. Or you can actually denormalize the database right there. So you might have an orders. You want to show that your business user orders. Well, they want to see customer as part of the order. And you can right. actually just take it and put it all together. And again, put it all in one data set for the, so you for the can business tell user if by the You can tell by the relationship and the data what type of join they're going to use. Right. And, and do it for them. Right. And the yeah. admin or the developer can go and even customize the view of it for the yeah. for the business user and maybe uh, denormalize it and, and hide those relationships. But we'll know how to generate the query and get the right data into the report. I also have undo things like this, but I'm all inside of a browser. So very much like a desktop app, office type application. And yet I'm all inside of a browser. It is definitely oriented for the web yeah. because the designer is all browser based. Mm -hmm. Any browser, no, nothing is to install on the client. So uh, th uh, it is very much web oriented. And again, we, we talked about scalability. The web presents interesting challenges for reporting. Yeah. You have now, instead of everyone running a report on their desktop, like we used to do in client server, on the web, all those reports are running on the server. Right. The, the server, you know, even yeah. on the service actually is a better way to think of it. Yeah. Right? And we'll actually, it'll take care of the, the scalability, load balancing, caching. I mean, developers have to deal with all these things today. So now we're actually giving them the server to, to help them deal with that and specific for reporting, mm. which is different. I mean, if you think about an application, we do caching of a, of a part of a page or something, but it's all different type of caching you want to do for reports. You know, there's caching of the data, there's caching of the document. Uh, it's entirely different. Uh, well, and I think, think part of this then gets into the sort of tuning of it. Like you, you're going to get this Monday morning crush mm -hmm. where everybody Absolutely. shows up to work and runs all the reports at the same time. Yeah. That reporting server, which normally has a pretty good life, is suffering for the next two hours to try to <laughs> yeah, crank sure. all yeah. these things out at once. Yeah, common thing. So we, 
you know, scheduling is one way to deal with that. Yeah. You can actually schedule a report and make it cached automatically. Yeah, uh, run it. Uh, email it to everybody. Yeah, yeah. run it at six o'clock in the morning. Don't wait right. till nine when everybody Absolutely. arrives. Run that report an hour earlier, you know, yeah. and it makes all the difference Life in the world. Life is easier. Awesome. Well, Scott, thank you very much for talking to us. I'm good. Thanks. You guys thanks are doing great work, and and you obviously know your stuff. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate being here. Fun. All right, and we'll see you next time on .NET Rocks.